time for that visit again. The more we do this, the faster time flies. And uh, my guest, Barbara McGuire, you met the last time when we did that time piece. Um, can you tell me the time? So I wanted to show you since that time, I got a watch <laughs> with, with two, um, two faces. With two faces, so <laughs> I can be lost twice. So we plan on not getting lost today. I want to acknowledge the gentleman that was, was um, good enough to let me use that opening shot. He is in, uh, with a group of friends in Canyon City, Colorado, and his name is Albert Kislavich. Hope I got that right. Thank you very much, Albert. Um, I'm sure the friends everywhere enjoy it. Um, I kind of want to set up a little bit how we came about being together so soon again. Mm -hmm. I had a guest, and we were all ready to go, and she had the flu all of a sudden, and, and canceled. She couldn't appear, so I called you late, late last night and said, Ooh, what are we going to do? And you said, that's enough to make you go, hmm. <laughs> and so here we are, and that's what we're going to talk about, things that make you go, hmm. I believe a senior hall is the one that, that started that, and it got to be quite a... Uh, quite a saying in, in some circles. And um, again, welcome to all the friends. Um, I have in front of me here a card that I got from a lady from North Carolina. I don't know if you can see it or not. It has a little angel on the front. And it's just a, it's a sort of a, it's like a thank you card. And inside here it says, thank you, Lillian, for the strangest way to get things done, to promote people to love one another you have a way. Congratulations on your achievement. All my love and appreciation for what you do, no matter how you do it. Love, Electra Ahn. And I've never personally met Electra Ahn, but the um, Anchorage, Anchorage and Canyon City people, you are very familiar with her. So we got on the phone last night mm -hmm. and asked if we could mention her in this program and kind of prepare you for some of the things that she does because she's, what she say, 81? Yes. Uh -huh. 81 years old and she can't just jump on a plane, but she promised to come in person. And so having said that, she makes, she makes wands. And that is, is, this is a shell and crystals. Mm -hmm. And that's what she works with. And right about here, I'm kind of lost, so I will let you explain that because Okay, uh, she says that she works with the um, grids, the power grids of the earth, mm -hmm. and she uh, has traveled all over the world uh, using her crystals uh, and friends who uh, help her uh, from other realms uh, to help to heal the earth mm -hmm. and to um, align the power grids or to keep the power where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, she uses her. She she isn't uh, traveling now because of her age, I guess. But she um, says that she uses a map now, mm -hmm. and she uses a pendulum, and she douses uh, where she's supposed to work uh, on the, these areas of the earth that need mm -hmm. healing. And she said that she's working on South Africa. Yeah, right I, I now. think the pendulum. Um, we don't want to confuse that with the OEG board type thing. Oh, no, no, um, no. Healers sometimes use pendulums, and my, we use it sometimes to like a map dowsing instead of a dowsing rod. It is a, it is a form of dowsing. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. The yeah. pendulum so is that, a... That's a little yes. different mm -hmm. then. Well, you, just, you hold it over a map, mm -hmm. and it can be made of brass or crystals or whatever. Exactly. And, uh, and it will, it actually swings to where, especially if you're as obviously intuitive as she mm -hmm. is, uh, where she's supposed to work. So she plants her feet on the map and she starts u using her crystals. And she has crystals, um, I'm sure her crystals are somewhat like this. She has, this is a record keeper crystal. And uh, this, these crystals actually, if you're tuned into the frequency of these crystals, they tell you information that they've gathered um, when they were growing in the mm -hmm. earth and where they were growing in the earth. And a lot of, um, of the secrets of things that we're going to get into later, these crystals know, mm -hmm. and they can unlock things that that only people who are intuitive with them can uh, can tell. So she uh, uses crystals and record keeper crystals to help 
uh, with her work. Mm -hmm. They help to balance the earth? Help to balance the earth, help to bring out uh, information that we need. Um, and I think the crystals are helping to open up some of the information that is coming out now. I guess it's, it's a lot of people that's bringing out information. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it is somewhat controversial. Mm -hmm. So today we thought what we do is touch on some of these things to pave the way for, for, some, for, for some of the people that's coming out and speaking up about things at this time. That's right. A lot of people who uh, find out some of these uh, secrets um, are people who are working on these secret projects with secret, uh, we keep saying secret, but they are secret, but we, mm -hmm. don't, we don't know about mm -hmm. them. Secret agencies that have uh, special rights in our mm -hmm. world that we don't have. And a lot of these people are defecting from these agencies because they're, it, it's the time for all the people to learn these things, not for just special groups of people to keep all this information to themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, Lillian was, she'll tell you the story of how she found out about the wing makers, and I'll go into it a little bit more, uh, what we found out about them. Um, it's... There's no reason why we shouldn't, as human beings, know what's going on in our world. Well, the, the way we came about this information is um, Monica was visiting from Anchorage. Mm -hmm. And so we, we did a lot of things together about some things I need to, to do by myself. So one of the things was uh, to stop by the bank. And for some reason, I had just forgot to pay the light bill. So it was either go pay the light bill or have Monica put on her makeup in the dark, you know, <laughs> the lights up. So I said, okay, let me run to the light company really fast. But I did go there in a roundabout way. I usually go pretty straight if I can, you know. So I ended up going to the light company and I lingered and then I, I, I went a long way around. My, my whole thing was I wanted to go to the office depot to make a copy of the opening shot that her and I used in some shows that we was taping. Well, I got to the office depot, and, and these two people were talking about things in Fort Lewis. Something was going on in Fort Lewis. So, of course, you know, half hearing like a doberman, and I could hear that, and being who I am, I bought it in. You know, I usually do. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, hey, what are we talking about here? And I can hear the planes going down to South America. And so we chatted for a minute, and they went about their business. And so, because they were nice enough to let me butt in. Uh, on my way out, I said, well, you know, sorry I interrupted you. And I said, well, gee, and what are you copying there? There was a whole stack of what I thought was poems. And the lady said, no, she said, those are the wing makers. And I said, what are the wing makers? She says, you know those caves? So, of course, I thought Randolph Winters type, right. you know, mm -hmm. what he had told us. And she says, no, 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 it's, this is a new thing. It's an old thing. It's a new old thing. And, and it's on the Internet. So... Um, having Monica was uh, wonderful because she is, she can just zoom around in the internet and I can't, you know. Mm -hmm. So she surfed the highway and then you came over and you surfed together and you can take Brought it Brought out here. the information that mm -hmm. we wanted, um, we wanted to, uh, what we want to do is we want to help the person uh, who's bringing out the information because uh, this is how we protect these people. Uh, is by telling as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody who wants to get on the internet and bring this up, mm -hmm. um, it's, I believe it's www.wingmakers, W I N G M A K E R S dot com. Dot right? com, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and, and I want to add something to this here. Um, a few, well, about two years ago, the crop circle, or uh, the crop circle connected. Those are the people in England that research the crop circles that I'm aff not really affiliated with, but I'm very familiar with them. Uh, someone had got a, a video of a part of a crop circle actually being made. And it, I was notified that night. The next day I flew out into Anchorage. And as soon as I got to Anchorage, someone had already mention it on Art Bell for some reason, and immediately said, this, this was a fake, it's a fake. What I would like to explain to you is, and I noticed from my own, from my own you know, travels and doings, 
it takes at least 18 months to prove anything one way or the other. All right. Okay. And eventually it, it was an authenticated footage. But the whole thing is, it doesn't matter until we know what it really is. It's, it's alleged. That's okay? right. So when we got into this, this website, right. the, f the first thing we came to was the wing makers for, for the pro. And then immediately after, here's, it can't be, blah, 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 and so on. And so we have freedom for opinions. And in our opinion, no? Right. This is worthy of talking about it. So go ahead. Right. OK. Um, this is a. It says it's an amazing story of the discovery of a time capsule stored deep inside a canyon wall for over a millennium. The wing makers left behind 23 chambers of artifacts consisting of paintings, poetry, music, philosophy, and enigmatic technologies that the most powerful organizations on Earth cannot decipher or activate. It's, it was discovered 27 years ago, um, and their code name is Ancient Aero project, okay? The um, organization that's studying it the, is the Advanced Contact Intelligence Organization, or ACIO, which they, we mm -hmm. know nothing about mm -hmm. and probably never will. Um, they are studying, they are studying it and have been studying it for 27 years. It, it was discovered that long ago. They have just now broken through some of the um, uh, language, however, because the the language was uh, in code and there was some ancient Sumerian languages and things that are no longer exist. And the, the man who defected was the linguist who was the one who studied the languages and he deciphered a lot of it for them. And actually through the, um, there was their paintings on the walls and things like that. Um, he st got sort of getting in contact with them. Well, they f they realized that these were not extraterrestrial. They thought that extraterrestrials had left in there, uh, left this uh, time capsule there, uh, and ate uh, uh, the. What's one is it? Eight hundred AD now. Eight hundred. Yeah. No, eight AD. Oh, eight, eight, eight years AD. after. Okay. Mm. I'm only a few hundred years. Right. Old, <laughs> but uh, they then now they realize that perhaps it was the time they left it there, but these were people from our future mm -hmm. or beings from our future. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a 45-page interview with this uh, with this scientist who defected, and he said, "Well, they really aren't going to probably going to do anything." to him for telling this information because nobody will believe it anyway. Exactly. And so that's what where uh, the anonymity comes in and nobody is going to you know really do anything, but they may get upset with him because nobody has ever defected before. Exactly. from from any of these uh, these t this type of thing. So he he's you know, he wants to get the information out. There's a lot of things that and I so I started researching some mm -hmm. things because Lobe Sang Rampa probably wrote 60 years ago about the Cave of the Ancients, mm -hmm. and that was also a time capsule cave. They had machines and um, things in there that, uh, as a Tibetan Lama, and he was a child at the time, they had never seen electric lights, let alone exactly. lights that weren't hot when they, you know. And when they went into this cave, the, the Lamas went in there, they, the whole thing lit up immediately with the presence of these people in in the cave and a landslide had opened the the cave up so they could find they found it um, these were they they left records the people who left in there and this was from a time past this was not a future time this so the, there's time there's time capsules from the past there's time capsules from the future uh, the cave that you mentioned that Randolph Winter told us about in uh, Arizona at Grand Canyon, at Grand Canyon mm -hmm. is a, was not actually a cave in that respect where a time capsule. It was a fortress. A fortress, uh -huh. exactly. Where, uh, and I did happen to find the word Anasazi in hieroglyphs means fortress. Mm -hmm. So you wonder where the Anasazi people came from, perhaps, you know, because there mm -hmm. were... Uh, lots of mummies in that cave, and you know Egyptian things in the cave, and things like that. Did, so didn't it have Tibetan and? And it also had it had Tibetan and mm -hmm. Tibetan-like 
things and Egyptian-like things in it. So it could have predated both of those civilizations and then they just went their own way, you know, and split off like, like people do after, after a while. But um, perhaps... Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was up the other night and um, I saw something on Channel 4. It was called the Columbia River. Mm -hmm. And they showed hieroglyphic, hieroglyphics and ancient, not really caves, but rocks in this area uh, at the Columbia River. And I thought how odd. Here, uh, most of the figures had little space helmets on, you know. Right. And then, of course, they, tol they talked about the Cooley Dam which is east, east of here. And um, in the way they explain it is when they, when they altered the flow of the river, of the Columbia River at that time, they said between, besides making the atom bomb, that was one of the most dangerous things we could have done to mankind. And um, in the UFO research and it just, any kind of UFO, mm -hmm. um, area, we are very aware that there's a lot of activity in the Cooley Dam area. There's pictures yes. on the internet and everything. And so when when Barbara and I, when we did that timepiece, we ran this, we ran this video um, of, of a UFO over St. Martin's College. Right. And um, at that time, I didn't really tell you, but it was, ooh, it was brought to me by a, a gentleman named, named Tom Walker. Um, his son, Chad, and Tom Walker took that video, and it's like 16 seconds long with mm -hmm. audio. Mm -hmm. And um, so we played that, and some of the friends that, that saw, you know, saw the show, they thought they really liked it, and they said you ought to run that through it again. And so right. it is our intent to run that by you again, or over you, whichever you want to look at it. And also I found one of my own that is not authenticated. So maybe we have the audio here too. Get it, Jen. See, it's not moving. See, it's sideways. Okay, okay. <laughs> Pushing it closer. Move it. Where are we going? Yeah, that was the one that Tom took. And then right afterwards, I took another one. And, and I believe that it's directly after what we just saw. Now, I did not authenticate that. And that was taken at night in the very same vicinity at directly over my house. And that has an audio portion with it, too. So just to tell you how what we go through sometimes. It looks just like it, the other one. I'd like to know what that is. Waving. Looks like it's waving. What's it doing? Something like that. It's little and it's big. It's gone. It's back. Wow. It's 
like a spleen. It's gonna get dead. It's... Wow. <laughs> Isn't that something? So it's gonna believe this. I think this is hell vile. Maybe not. <laughs> That's gee. It's all over the place. Okay, Mr. Clarkson told me I gotta have something to compare it to. Okay, oops. Okay, so we need we need to come down so we can judge distance. Except I can't see anything. Okay, this is a street light. This is my house. And I'm I'm standing about, I don't know, maybe 30 feet from my house. And I'm turning this way. Is this a street light? In comparison. Okay. This would be a street light. And this is Hale Bob. There you go. I thought it was Hale Bob. <laughs> All the time I thought that was Hale Bob, but it wasn't. <laughs> I have never moved my feet. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go over a little bit and show you my son's house. Okay. I'm making a little turn here. This is my son's house. Right here. This is a mobile home. And there you have, this is a, a Dodge Caravan. Now, I'll go back to Hale here, if I can find it. There it is. I think that's Hale Bob. If there's other stars in the sky. I'm gonna stop it for a minute. Or is it the sky? I can't look up this high. I don't know what's there. But they're way up there. And then... This is a street light. <laughs> this is a street light. <laughs> These are all the street lights at St. Martin's. These are street lights at St. Martin's. This is a street light. I can't find it. I'll look again tomorrow. Uh, today is the 1st April. Well, it was, it was not Hale Bob, because Hale Bob was behind me. Um, but that's what I thought it was for a long time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. things just happen all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't look, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing that I think that, because a lot of people go through life and they don't look. Mm -hmm. you know, they don't, they just don't care, they don't look, they don't, you know, they live their life and that's fine. And if it's what you, you feel you want to do, great, do it, you know. So these wonderful ancestors mm -hmm. or our future generations, they just left things for us, you know. Yes, they Coming did. Coming or going, I don't know. They did. Or they, they know told them. They told the llamas before they left the cave that if they didn't think mankind was ready for this, mm -hmm. they better seal the cave back up again. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they did because at that time, the llamas knew that the uh, Chinese were going to invade Tibet and they were going to totally destroy their culture. So um, they sealed the cave back up again. And there were things in there that, of course, machines and things they didn't want anyone to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. So they used their discretion and they closed the cave back up. Uh, 
the Lamas said that there were, uh, well, the people who had left the record there said that there were uh, caves in, I mean, there were um, artifacts or things left in uh, South America, mm -hmm. Easter, no, not Israel, not the, the one. Let's see, South America. I have it, I have it in it my notes. I believe it was the bikinis. I'm not really sure where they located. No, not the bikinis. <laughs> That's a different one. Just a different <laughs> island? <laughs> no, it isn't. Um, oh, in the Himalayas, Tibet, Egypt, and uh, in South America. That's where they've, these p particular people left time capsules. Okay. Now, in... Uh, <laughs> it's okay, you can laugh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I know, I, can, I know, I, can see it. I know. <laughs> and then there's some other, uh, some other ones who have left uh, uh, capsules uh, in um, the Grand, uh, well, Grand Canyon. We can call that one. Um, Easter Island is mm -hmm. is one you're thinking of, and Siberia. Mm -hmm. No. That was, I was thinking of the, of the Bikini Islands. Okay. And, and okay. I, the reason I said that is because they did somebody did some kind of tests and, and they had to take everybody off of there. Oh, yeah, they and did the A-bomb the test. So That's it was right. sort of in the same thought line. I was right, just, right. Well, you have to, <coughs> you, you know, when you, when you stop and realize that these people destroyed themselves exactly. through yeah. atomic bombs, yeah. I mean, uh, we've done this before yeah. to ourselves. And... Um, they did not want this to happen again, again. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, they're trying to warn us, and I, I don't, it doesn't seem like we learn things very well. Uh, you know, we, we just continue to keep hurting ourselves. Uh, you, I was looking at the UFO, and it reminded me of uh, Preston Nichols when he was talking about, he used to have to back engineer a lot of UFOs. Well, he worked for a company that did that, and he said that when he went on, uh, you were talking about how it goes mm -hmm. like this. Well, he said that they're ran by, a lot of them are ran by uh, uh, reality drive, which means when you go aboard the, the craft, it's their reality that they uh, manipulate the ship with. Mm -hmm. He said he went inside a ship that he knew wasn't that big, but when he went inside of it, it, it looked huge. And it was he was in their reality, and so things were different for him. So, um, you know, when we look at these things, it's the pulsations and all that. Mm -hmm. It's 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 their physics. Their it's their physics that brought that ship to here, and we cannot uh, put our physics on theirs. You know, we can't say, well, phys our our physics say you can't do that. Exactly, like when to get back to Wendell Winters coming right, here. Right. Right. Um, in one of his slideshows, he showed us pictures where. The Earth had two moons. Yes. And also he had pictures of dinosaurs. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. That were visible from ships. Yes. So mm -hmm. he again showing how we can go to the ancestors and how we can go to the future. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, well, because we, we perceive time as linear, uh, we, we can't understand that. But it is time, co you know, the, the behind time and the ahead of time and the now time all exist at mm -hmm. the same time. So that's why all these things can happen. Uh, not sure how exactly. The the person that's ahead of this ACIO uh, is a, above genius, and from what I understand, he used some of the machines in this in this mm -hmm. cave to make himself even more intelligent. He was a genius in the first place. He's only in, he's only interested in traveling in the future. Mm -hmm. So he's he doesn't really care, you know about what happens to uh, what else is going on in the world. Uh, but the, even the people who run the, uh, the money and, and all that in our world are a little bit afraid of this guy because he's, they've got all this technology and stuff and they're learning how to use it. And it's way beyond anything we have. There's new physics in there from what I understand and um, things that are very, you know, very, could be very scary if, if fallen in the wrong hands. So, but, but once you understand something, it's not as frightening as... No, and it's just kind of exciting that we live in a time where we can zoom in, you know, go on that super highway and, and off we go. You That's know? right. It's, it, this is probably the most fascinating mm -hmm. time. I'm so glad I decided to come in this, at this time uh, of, of the planet's life. Uh, 
I feel I'm I feel I have a lot of um, psychic archaeology in me, mm -hmm. you know, and so I I feel that um, when I get a chance to go on the road, I'm going to start mm -hmm. looking around for a few things. I think there's some things out there I'm supposed to find. Uh, um, so it's going to be exciting, and, and even more so than it is right now. But there's a lot more yet to discover. We were talking about Sun Bear the other day. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's. We, we, I think we kind of need to go to Sun Bear for a mm -hmm. minute. From yes. Yeah. Here again, Washington State, Eastern Washington. Mm -hmm. Sun Bear was a very uh, spiritual uh, Native American man who uh, started teaching people about the uh, medicine wheel. Mm -hmm. And he brought the medicine wheel into a, a fact that you, anyone could use the medicine wheel uh, to kind of tell where they were at, mm -hmm. and, you know, in their life. Uh, he has passed away uh, about three years ago, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, but he had bought some land up in Spokane, and on the land there were caves. He said, I know there's caves here, and I know that some of these caves have secrets in them. And he said, there'll be a time when these caves will open up, and we'll be able to go in and find out what it is. Uh, he, wanted, he wanted everyone to be able to find out. He didn't want just a select few. Because, I mean, you can't go into the cave in Arizona, in the Grand exactly, Canyon, yeah. because the government's got it blocked off, and they found all, you know, the information out in there. The same way with this other place. Mm -hmm. We can't find out about that because, you know, we're not, I guess we're just not worthy. I don't know. <laughs> it seems like that's what they feel like. We're not worthy to go in there and find out what's going on. But we do have a right to know because it's our planet, and... Um, we need to take control of our planet back because we've really lost the control of our planet. Al Bielik was uh, talking about uh, all the extraterrestrials and all the treaties and mm -hmm. things that we have with them. Exactly. And all the and, and he he even says where they came from. Uh, what you know? Um, it's it's so some people in some circles just know all these things. They've worked with these aliens. They've worked you know they know that that they're really there, but the do we know? You know? Yeah, we, we touched on that the last time we were mm -hmm. visiting together. Mm -hmm. Then you got really excited and we talked about it again at my house the other, mm -hmm. other day about uh, the, the, in Egypt. The, um, yes, they've, they have, uh, they're saying, and I don't know whether they're going to allow them to continue, but that they have gone into the secret room into the, in the big pyramid and now they're saying that, oh, well, there could have been extraterrestrials that came here and did leave an imprint on us, on humankind. So they found out something in that pyramid, uh, and I think they're, they're going to divulge some of it. I don't know how much of it, but they are going to divulge some of it because too many people knew about it, and too many people want to know what's going on. The author escapes my memory right now, but there is a book. It's called... Um Akhenaten, uh, the extraterrestrial king of the Egyptians, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's a novel, you know, mm -hmm. but for my mother, my mother being half Egyptian, uh, she told me some of those stories, you know, when, when, when I was growing up, how, um, how all that came about and how the ancient Egyptians thought that, you know, they were very interbred even with, with extraterrestrials. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And I believe to this present day that they they acknowledge that, you know, mm -hmm. they call them the yins and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the uh, a lot of cultures are, are more savvy about mm -hmm. these things than we are. Yeah, the Dogons uh, of Africa, you know. Right. They, mm -hmm. they deal with, with um, Sirius. Mm-hmm. Yes. The, uh -huh. the Dog Star. That's right. The aberration is of of Australia, they acknowledge the Pleiades. Yes. Uh, in the uh, series also, no? Yes, this, yes, you do. Yeah. Uh -huh. So no matter which way we go, it's, it's just becoming uh, an everyday thing. And you can, there was a time you you talk to a person and you say, oh my, this is gray, and it was a color. Mm -hmm. And now when you say, oh my, this is gray, and they say, oh, where, where, you know? Right. So even our vocabulary has been adjusted to things to come, and that's kind of good. Oh, absolutely, huh? yes. Yeah. Well, we are we are becoming a lot more aware, which makes us a lot 
more apt to ask questions, the right questions to the right people. And you see, if we insist on something, Mm -hmm. as, a, as a whole people, not just one person going. If we insist on something, somebody has to come up with some answers because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we'll find out somehow because we're, we're just, we're, as a human race, we're very determined. Uh, we're very curious and we want to know what's going on, you know. There was actually a movie, it, it's called Unofficial Denial. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who was in it or anything. And it was basically the storyline, like what we make us is here, where the future where, people where they came, yeah. and then it later turned out they had been asked from the future, and they showed us what we was doing to our planet. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, would you happen to know who's in the I movie? Think I think Parker don't Stevens was the mm -hmm. star of that, wasn't he? Parker Stevens. I have a total blank. Oh, as I, to who I, was I, in I, it. I don't remember either exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I know that. It was on the on TV the other day, as a matter oh, of fact. Oh, was it? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It's and called so. Unofficial Denial. Right. It's a really good movie. Yeah, it is. It gives you another perception mm -hmm. of things. Uh, you know, I mean, just try to be aware of everything. I, mm -hmm. I, and there's just there's just so much to be aware of right now. You know, we need to keep really alert to what's going on. And and then here, like Mr. Vampa in in his environment as a child and you know just like the Egyptians those things are normal yes and, yeah. and as Western as it took us a little longer to catch on you know mm-hmm mm -hmm. well we've we uh, we have such a diverse cultures here you know that uh, and people stayed in their own little groups for mm -hmm. so long uh, that uh, we really didn't get together as a people until I think recently now we're beginning to share look a lot of our cultures with each other and we're beginning to um, come together as a as a group of people that that need to know what's going on uh, we want to know uh, we may not like it or we may not accept it but we want to know you know uh, eventually we'll either learn whether it's right or it's not mm -hmm. I had a conversation with one of the friends in Canyon City last night and and she was telling me she was in a sound sleep and she woke up in some tall and dark, you know, I, I guess it's shadows, maybe it was a shadow or something, was standing uh, by her bed and it really kind of scared her because she lives by herself, you know. And then not only that, eventually she goes to sleep and she wakes up again and whoever is, is back and uh, it really kind of frightened her a little bit. And she asked me what I thought about that and this is what I told her, that we at a time now that the earth probably isn't, I know it isn't where it used to be, and there's such a fine line between dimensions. And just to illustrate that to you, two days after we did that, you know, the can you tell me the time program, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't quite get back to normal there for a minute or two, so, so I thought instead of leaving my house, I was just going to stay home and wait it out and see if I can, you know get a grip on things. And um, actually, I was going to watch the State of the Union. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the name of it, no? And I boiled potatoes, and uh, I put the potatoes on my plate and got a can of fish. I wanted fish with that, put it on the plate. I go into the living room. I sit on the couch. Well, I attempted to sit on the couch. And you know, like when you go to a party and it's very crowded and, and you, you talk and you saw a chair and you sit on it, but someone already got to it before you did. Well, it was just like that. Here's my plate with the steaming potatoes. I sit on the couch. I say, oh, excuse me. And I turn. Of course, there was nobody there, except what I said on was solid, you know. Right, right. Now, and I was a little rattled. Uh, I have to admit that. In fact, when I did eat the potatoes, they were cold. But uh, I was a little rattled. So yeah, you called me. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> with, with these reality shifts, and it was really a reality because it was real. That's you know? right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we are going forward and being more aware. Yes, we are. I mean, we are. We're, we're going to see a lot more things, mm -hmm. uh, things that we never realized were mm -hmm. there. Um, more. Uh, Artifacts will be found that are saying, they're going to be saying these really are not artifacts. They were, you know, mm -hmm. something that 
either it was from the future or from a past civilization. Hundreds of thousands of years passed. So would you say there is other things than good and evil? Yeah, well, yeah, uh, light and dark. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't <coughs> like the word evil because I don't think, I think that uh, Excuse me. it's how you perceive it <coughs> that makes mm -hmm. it evil, you know, or makes it bad. But the uh -huh. majority of people, that seems to be the only, the only way they can re relate to. Right, you know, good it's either this or yeah, that. That's right. Know. So mm -hmm. we pref like I say, we prefer to use negative and positive. Right, right. right. And for a long time, one and one, and one was two. Yes, and but it isn't any longer. Anymore, no. not one and a half and a half is also <laughs> right. two. Right, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's getting really interesting. It's getting exciting. Um, I, I just, you know, every day look to see if there's something new coming out mm -hmm. that I can get excited about because it's happening really fast now. Um, I think I said a couple of years ago that the extraterrestrial thing would be exposed sometime this yes, year. Yes, you did. Uh -huh. In mm -hmm. fact, you stated yeah. that mm -hmm. last time we were together, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I mean, other people know these things, so why can't we know it? Mm -hmm. You know. Th this web page, it has lots of pictures. Um, uh, I didn't go to the whole thing, but from what I understand, there's quite a, a, a gallery of photographs. Yes, I didn't get mm -hmm. that far yet. Our mm -hmm. printer uh, only printed 20 mm -hmm. pages out for me uh, of the interview mm -hmm. that she, this uh, lady had with the doctor. She calls this doctor, Dr. Anderson. Of course, it's, it's not it's mm -hmm. this person's real name. And I'm sure Anne is not the uh, interviewer's real name either. But uh, yeah, there's supposed to be a lot of pictures and uh, uh, I guess some drawings too. The uh, petroglyphs, I guess, are really interesting that they they've left. Um, some some of the language. I don't know why they're using different languages in the future, but it's a long way in the future. I think it's six thousand something, mm -hmm. and and that's quite quite a bit ahead. The only people are, that I know that are farther ahead than that are the uh, people who do the koala uh, project. And those are people who are working on trying to uh, get our timeline back on the right timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're from 8,885, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have, uh, they have a place in uh, Golden, Colorado. And it is 250 feet underground because they don't want, th th they're sort of on opposition to the Montauk, mm -hmm. okay? So they're trying to undo what Montauk is doing. Would you happen to know how far that is from Grand Junction? Um, no, I really don't. But I don't think it's that far. No, it's right. all that area yeah. around there is pretty that's hot. That's a very active area. Very, very, yeah, very I, active area. We picked up some strange right. photographs there. Mm -hmm. So they, they work in this time and they work in that, mm -hmm. that time. They, they were sent through, supposedly it says that they were sent through their it says, Koala was established by inner light networks in our current time frame and was projected through a time tunnel to the future, which they projected to 8,885 AD. Um, and they work from that time also. And they also have, which I have, still don't understand because I'm not a technical person in that respect, they have a, a situation where they can be in between time, where there, there is no time. And they, they work from that area, which is a very safe area because no one can touch them there. Okay. I, I suggest you get one of those watches too because yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can get lost in yeah. and, and, Are we two, getting... and two times here. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. This is a, that they have, a, that these people do are, uh, besides Golden, there are balancing nodes such as Easter Island. They're the ones I was thinking mm -hmm. about, Easter Island, and Ramset, which is located under the Pentagon. So that's a good one. And I, and I have not, I don't, they didn't say anything more about it than that. So I, I don't understand that one, but it um, sounds interesting. Yeah, so, so I think what we should do is try with an open mind and caution, you know, caution is important. Uh, try to be supportive to some people that come uh, and share new things with us. And, and when a statement is made of any kind, it's not that, it just,
come out and make a statement. I'm sure a lot of research and everything went into into place before you know you say something about oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Like Al Balik and and Preston Nichols here again. Uh, it took them a long time, and um, Mr. Adair, you know, he had to go and testify in front of Congress. He was mm -hmm. the rocket scientist that was brought in to, um, to show the government how some of the things worked that they had found somewhere else at the age of 17, I believe it was. And he said, well, if you see me on a milk carton, you know, and, and so it's kind of hard when we, when we just visit and talk about things to have right. that in, your, in the back of your mind that, ooh, maybe I'm not supposed to say that, you know. So we need to help set up things right. for people so they can come out and share this information freely. That's why people like Al Bielik and uh, uh, Duncan and Preston Nichols mm -hmm. and those people come out in front of small groups and mm -hmm. they say these things because they need to get as much uh, exposure as possible mm -hmm. to the public. And if we can help in some way, then we should do that. I did a piece on frequency here um, a mm -hmm. little while ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had interviewed other people, you know, uh, if, 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 then what I wanted to do is have a whole group of us sitting and visiting and talking about how we are being interfered with HOP and, and all these things. And well, as it turned out, everybody wanted to talk about it, but some of them were just not willing to say this in public. You know. I don't know you, why. You know, it's and, it's and public I, and knowledge. I to be mm -hmm. And they will say, they, they, they will tell you, oh yeah, HARP is there. And mm -hmm. what they say it is a, um, to tell us if anything comes within our um, mm -hmm. atmosphere, they know it. It's what, I forget what they call it, some kind of a f horizonal. I think it's a field. It's, it's not radar, but it is mm -hmm. a, you know, yeah, some that kind type of, of thing. Field. But what they didn't, don't tell you is that it puts a sonic blast up through our stratosphere and doesn't exactly. do us any good. <laughs> Yeah, well, we don't need to know anything else uh, messing around with our atmosphere or stratosphere, but. Yeah, so, so. We, we should be looking into things from the past, the present, and the future, um, mm -hmm. and send good energy to Mother Earth and, That's the, right. and the people in it. Well, she's here. given up some of her secrets and mm -hmm. wanting to teach us things, so we might as well mm -hmm. open our minds and learn. Uh, when I went to the Hopis, I saw the, the hieroglyphics on that rock, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the train of life. And, and just to think about how long ago someone had scratched that in there. 400 to, years, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, just to leave you a message, you know. And then, of I course, know. somebody came and added things and took some things off. But for someone to take the time to leave a message, just like uh, here, John Hoekland and the face on Mars, and then you can go. In that direction, we have billboards in the universe that are just telling us that's right. You know who we are and what we're doing, and that we're a lot smarter and a lot more knowledgeable than we think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and we do have the tools. You know, we have oh, the computers and the telephones and the, and uh, and we we shouldn't underestimate uh, underestimate our psychic ability and our own minds and our. Um, you know, we used to all. Uh, communicate through telepathy mm -hmm. because you know, but we've kind of let that part of our brain go a little bit. In the new children. We talked about the right, new children. Right. Those things are gonna be so normal to them. Oh, it's yes. just mm -hmm. old fogies here that <laughs> we just right. are the whole thing. Right. So the consciousness is changing and um, mm -hmm. if you have any stories or anything that you wanna share, some some kind of strangeness, you know, um, tell us and we we'll see if we can use it or, you know, look at it and you you might have some answers for us there too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because mm -hmm. two heads is better than one. That's right. But three is even better. Than <laughs> oh, yeah. That's you see, true. We we pretty we, we gave the address, no? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe we did. And. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I believe there's a total of 152 pages that couple told me. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I said, I only got half of the interview, which was 20 pages. Mm -hmm. uh, there's was well, 25 more. What I'm hoping my daughter can bring some more of that up for me mm -hmm. on, you know, yeah. on our computer, because I I enjoy reading these things. And if they're if they're not true, well, 
I've had a good time. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that it is true. And I believe that I'm psychic enough to know that whether it is or it isn't. Yeah, that's, uh -huh. yeah. that's, that's the key to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And even the primitive, what we consider primitive, um, aboriginal people, you know, in, in other parts of the world, they, uh, we perceive as, mm -hmm. as such, but they're so, so knowledgeable. Oh, they're, on they're, so, they're so advanced, they don't even have to, they don't even really live in their bodies, you know. Exactly, yeah, they, so. They come into their bodies during the day to do the functional things they have to do mm -hmm. at night. They, that's when they really do their living. Yeah, so it, it, it's my hope to, to get to visit with the aborigines one mm -hmm. day. Uh, Get to Madagascar. Before they all leave, you know, they're supposed to leave yeah, pretty soon. Mm -hmm. now, so. yeah, yeah, they are leaving. Marla Morgan wrote a new book, and uh, mm. I believe she deals with hieroglyphics and this type of thing at mm -hmm. this time, too. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of information out there, you know, go to oh, the library, yes. and, uh, suggest a movie, write us a postcard, you know. If Absolutely. If you have any ideas? I mean, if there's anything we can research for them or mm -hmm. bring up for them, that would be wonderful. I'd love to do that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I know you would. It might be fun one day to, to question some of the children and let the children have their, have their mm -hmm. say so. That's right. Well, we're almost at the end of the, the show again. Okay. And I'm glad I had mentioned that you will be a regular, probably you will be, mm -hmm. because we can talk about so many things. Uh, be good to your fellow man and love yourself. And uh, see, I just left again. We we do that. <laughs> we do that sometimes. We're not slowing down. We just need to listen to the to the rest of the conversation. Keep an open mind. But keep it. Yeah. Keep keep an open mind. Keep your sense of humor. That seems to be. You know, we always talk about keeping your sense of humor. Center yourself on love, and I mm -hmm. think you can go wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Art Bell is a good program. Maybe we would want to make reference to that. He can sometimes. be very informative. He if can he, be very informative. If he lets his guests speak, mm -hmm. he can be very informative. Yeah. Yes. So it's a lot of good information mm -hmm. in, in that area also. I believe ever once in a while there, is, there are lectures at the library that that's also free of charge. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, if you you know if you get interested in anything like this, uh, reading is is good to start off with reading and uh, find out if there is any lectures because usually if you become interested in something, mm -hmm. then the information starts coming to yes. to you so you can learn more. Okay, yeah. and, and with that, we have to uh, bid you goodbye till next week, and we're happy that you came to visit us again, and be careful traveling, and stop and smell the roses, and just share information with the friends. Again, thank you for coming, Barbara. Thank you. Bye-bye. There you go. We did it. I don't